AI could be an enemy of Google. Traditional search, we get lots of links when we search something on Google, was going to be eclipsed by things like GPT-4, where it will not just give us links, it will write our PhD thesis for us. But perhaps now Google can actually use AI and AI can be a friend of Google. Where do you stand? I hope so. You know, Google's got some significant challenges. It is, of all of the MAG7, I think the one that's got the most headwinds. It's got legal challenges. The The regulators are clearly unhappy with it. And it's a one-trick pony, at least it was before the earnings call. The fact that we've got a buyback, the fact that we've got this AI now in search, if they can truly broaden that and make it something with true utility as opposed to just an information gathering platform, then I think they've got a shot. Let's talk about Microsoft also out overnight. Not quite so many headlines about Microsoft, but slow and steady. It's been on the AI bandwagon for an awfully long time now with its cloud computing division, and it just seems to continue, Keith. Well, it does. But, you know, here's the thing that the headlines really aren't grasping yet. And I would encourage investors around the world to think about. We had a 17 percent top line growth on Microsoft, right here nor there. Good numbers. But what's really important is we had 31 percent year over year in Azure. Fully 67 percent of that came from AI alone. Imagine what happens when that scales and you've got double those figures. The company is radically undervalued. In fact, we heard from officers in Microsoft saying, despite all of the billions of dollars they're spending, they can't keep up with the demand for AI. That's telling. Microsoft is undervalued with a market capitalization of $3 trillion. Yes, it is. Here's the thing. Accounting regulations look at widgets and physical goods and inventory. They do not adequately, as they exist today, anywhere in the world that I'm aware of, presently account for digital expenditures, which means you've got the perception of high P.E. ratios because you can't account for all of the value that comes from digital investments. So I submit and, you know, this is a radical thought, but I submit these companies are still tremendously undervalued based on what they will accomplish as a result. Okay, well, that's Microsoft. So we've heard from four of the Magnificent Seven this week. Meta came out on Wednesday and the share price was punished. The numbers from Meta Meta were actually good in terms of advertising dollars. But investors didn't like the fact that Mark Zuckerberg was still talking about the metaverse and investing in things like headsets. What was your take on Meta? Well, I agree with the investors on that. I stayed away from the company. We've encouraged our clients to stay away from the company. 94% of that company's revenues comes from advertising. So the fact that he started going around the map to talk about things that largely are pie in the sky sort of dreams is how investors perceive them. It's logical to me that stock is punished. I don't see that one as a winner long term.